Hi guys, welcome to Mitochondria, a channel that aims to help medical students studying in the UK with management of medical conditions in accordance to NICE guidelines. This topic is on hypertension. This video follows the hypertension NICE guidelines of 2019. Hypertension refers to abnormally high systolic or diastolic blood pressure and it can be classified into primary hypertension, also known as essential hypertension, and secondary hypertension, which means high blood pressure due to a secondary pathology. Always remember to rule out secondary causes of hypertension in younger patients, which according to NICE guidelines is less than 40 years old. There are many different secondary causes of hypertension, and these can be classified into renal, endocrine, vascular, and other causes. For renal causes, you have to consider polycystic kidney disease, glomerulonephritis, and renal cell carcinoma. Endocrine causes include Cushing's, pheochromocytoma, and acromegaly. Vascular causes include coarctation and renal artery stenosis. Other important causes include drugs, such as steroids, and other illicit drugs, like cocaine. If you are suspecting a patient to have secondary causes of hypertension, it is important for you to rule out these conditions. Diagnosis of hypertension can be divided into stages. Stage 1 hypertension is when blood pressure is between 140 over 90 and 160 over 100. Stage 2 is a blood pressure of 160 over 100 and 180 over 120. Anything higher than 180 over 120 is stage 3 hypertension. According to NICE guidelines, there are a couple of investigations that are relevant to hypertension. As mentioned, if you are suspecting secondary causes of hypertension, it is important to investigate them accordingly to rule them out. In addition, it is essential that we assess the complications of hypertension as well. Complications of high blood pressure affects multiple organs such as the heart causing myocardial infarction, the brain causing strokes, the eyes causing hypertensive retinopathy, and the kidneys causing kidney diseases. To monitor these effects, NICE guidelines 2019 recommended performing routine bloods such as FBC, U and E's, and LFTs. Lipids and HbA1c is also performed to assess future risks of cardiovascular diseases. EGFR, urine dipstick, and urinary albumin creatinine ratio should also be performed to assess for any kidney damage. In addition, fundoscopy should be performed to rule out hypertensive retinopathy. Q risk should be calculated and ECG should be done too. With regards to referrals, you should do a same-day specialist referral for all patients with blood pressure of more than 180 over 120 with signs of accelerated hypertension. These include evidence of retinal hemorrhage and papilloedema or any life-threatening features such as new onset confusion, chest pain, heart failure, or acute kidney injury. Patients with suspected pheochromocytoma should be sent for a same-day specialist referral too. This is an overview of the management of hypertension, and this can be split according to the patient's blood pressure. If the patient's clinic blood pressure is less than 140 over 90, the patient does not have hypertension and the GP just needs to recheck the patient's blood pressure every 5 years. If the patient's clinic blood pressure is between 140 over 90 and 180 over 120, offer ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure monitoring. This is to account for white coat effect, which may increase systolic blood pressure by approximately 20 millimeters of mercury. In addition, if the patient is less than 40 years old, investigate for secondary causes. 
perform a kill risk, and investigate for any end organ damage. If ABPM or HBPM shows stage 1 hypertension, offer drug treatment if the patient is less than 80 years old with any of these followings. Target organ damage, cardiovascular disease, any renal disease, diabetes, or if Q risk is more than 10%. Consider drug treatment for patients less than 60 years old with a Q risk of less than 10%. This is because evidence has shown that treating patients under 60 years of age with a Q risk of less than 10% to be cost effective. If ABPM or HBPM shows stage 2 hypertension, offer drug treatment regardless. If clinic BP is more than 180 over 120, immediately search for evidence of accelerated hypertension such as retinal hemorrhage or papillary edema, any life-threatening features or pheochromocytoma. If any of these features are present, refer immediately for same-day specialist review. If none of these are present, investigate for end organ damage, offer drug treatment, and review blood pressure in clinic after seven days. There are many different blood pressure targets, and these are catered according to the patient's comorbidities. But in general, according to NICE guidelines, if the patient is less than 80 years old without any comorbidities, aim for target blood pressure of less than 140 over 90. If the patient is more than 80 years old without comorbidities, aim for a blood pressure of less than 150 over 90 due to the risk of falls and postural hypotension in this age group. Patients with other comorbidities should have their target blood pressure catered accordingly as seen in this table. In terms of management, this can be divided into lifestyle interventions and pharmacological interventions. Lifestyle interventions should include diet and exercise, reducing alcohol and smoking, where you can offer alcohol and smoking interventions, reduction in caffeinated products such as tea and coffee, and monitoring salt intake. For pharmacological management, this can be determined by the demographics of the patient. If the patient has type 2 diabetes or is less than 55 years old, non-Black African or Black African Caribbean, offer ACE inhibitors or ARBs as first line. Second line would be adding a calcium channel blocker or thiazide-like diuretics. If patient is more than 55 years old or is Black African or African Caribbean, offer calcium channel blockers as first line. If calcium channel blockers cannot be tolerated, offer thiazide-like diuretics as first line. Second line would be adding an ACE inhibitor or ARB or thiazide-like diuretics. Third line for all patients would be an ACE inhibitor or ARB plus a calcium channel blocker, plus a thiazide-like diuretic. If the patient's blood pressure is still high, recheck blood pressure with ABPM or HBPM and assess adherence. Consider an alpha or beta blocker if the patient's potassium is more than 4.5, or spironolactone if patient's potassium is less than 4.5. This is because spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic and high potassium levels can cause complications such as cardiac arrhythmias. If blood pressure is still uncontrolled, refer patient to the specialists. You should also take note that ARB is preferred over ACE inhibitors if patient is Black African or Black African Caribbean as recommended by NICE guidelines. There are a couple of drug classes that are used for hypertension. 
ACE inhibitors, such as Remipril, may cause a dry cough. This is because inhibiting ACE increases lung bradykinin levels, thus causing the dry cough. Change ACE inhibitors to ARBs if the patient has a side effect of the cough. Moreover, ACE inhibitors can act on the kidneys and cause hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. ARBs, like candy sultan, can act on the kidneys and cause hyponatremia and hyperkalemia as well. Dihydropyridines, such as amlodipine, causes flushing and peripheral edema as it causes peripheral arterial vasodilation. Thiazide-like diuretics, such as indapamide, causes gout because it increases urate adsorption and decreases urate secretion. Their effects on the kidneys can also cause hyponatremia, hypo kalemia and hypercalcemia. Remember to stop ACE inhibitors, ARVs and thiazides in patients with acute kidney injuries as they can worsen the AKI. Beta blockers like atenolol can cause postural hypotension, co-peripheries, bradycardia and erectile dysfunction as they inhibit sympathetic responses. Alpha blockers like doxazosin targets alpha-1 adrenal receptors, causing vasodilation of the vessels, leading to postural hypotension. Aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone are potassium sparing and can cause hyperkalemia. Spironolactone also inhibits testosterone production causing peripheral estradiol conversion, leading to gynecomastia. Remember to stop ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and spironolactone if patient has hyperkalemia. So this has been an overview of the management of hypertension in accordance to NICE guidelines 2019. Don't worry if you feel that this is information overload. The most important things you need to know are how to diagnose and investigate hypertension, the importance of looking for secondary causes of hypertension in younger patients, management of hypertension, step-by-step -step drug treatment to offer for hypertension, and the common side effects of antihypertensives. Remember always to offer lifestyle advice for all patients and check drug adherence before adding an additional drug. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Subscribe for more videos in the future.